Ladies and gentlemen, newcomers, PS5 players, whoever you may be, uh, welcome. My name is Gotcha Smack, and I wanted to provide some very valuable insight for the newcomers coming today, October 10th, to Honkai Star Rail. I am one of the veteran uh, content creators for this video game. I've been playing every single day. I've missed a couple recently due to adulting. You know how that goes. Or maybe you don't. Who knows? Anyways, um, I have an extensive amount of knowledge with this game. And I recently made a free-to-play friendly account to start all the way over again so that I can have a better relatable experience to the newcomer player. Because what happens when you become a veteran is you just tend to forget all the new free-to-play friendly advice because you just carry with the flow of the of the uh, you know the dynamic of the game and the progression and so on and so forth. Uh, but essentially, you're going to be getting some good, valuable feedback from me because now I am a veteran player starting all the way over again with the extensive knowledge that I already have, and I want to share that with you so that you don't make any mistakes because gotcha games are very, very prone to mistakes being made, and you cannot get these resources back once you have done so. So uh, let's go ahead and get into all the tips and advice that I have for you guys. I think you're going to like what I got for you. Starting off with uh, tip number one, stay the course, my friend. You're going to want to stick to the story and progress through the story as, unfortunately, as fast as possible. Now, I get it. You're probably somebody who wants to enjoy themselves and take your time with the game and enjoy it. And you can very well do that. But just know that you are going to be wasting resources that can be acquired on a day-to-day -day and weekly basis. Now, if you don't mind that, sure, do your thing. But for the people who actually want to get these resources immediately, you're going to want to stay the course, progress through the story as fast as possible. You can always go back and explore and do whatever the hell you want to do later. But getting that story gate kept uh, resource unlocked is very imperative to the longevity of your account value. Uh, and what I mean by this, there are dailies and weeklies that can only be done once you reach certain thresholds of story progression. Uh, allow me to show you uh, a couple examples of what I'm talking about. Interastral Guide right here is going to be your dailies. When you click this open, you have five dailies that you need to do. Uh, take one photo, which I've already done. Level up any relic one time. Use technique two times. Complete Forgotten Hall one time. This, for example, can't not even be done unless you reach a certain threshold of the story progression. And this is a very important end game later on in the game, uh, as well as some very juicy one time collectible rewards. But you won't even be able to do this until you reach a certain story progression. So once you complete all these, you're going to get some resource that you can use to get limited banner characters and a plethora of other resources pertaining to leveling up your characters, relics, etc, etc. But essentially what I'm trying to say here is you want to stay the course for these very reasons. Uh, now, let's go ahead and go over all of the day to day and weekly things that you're going to be doing to increase your account value, expand your resources and slap them cheeks, if you know what I mean. So let's come over here. These are going to be all the day to day and weekly options that you're going to have, and they're all going to pertain to a resource we call Trailblaze Power. In other words, Another gatekeeping mechanic by Gotcha Games to prevent you from grinding that game until your eyes start bleeding. They don't want you playing their games all day. Actually, the real truth is they don't want you reaching a threshold of grind to where you're no longer enjoying their game. So this is utilized to uh, play their games in moderation, so to speak. This little resource up here. If you're a Genshin player coming over to Honkai Star Rail, this is essentially the resin of the game. If you're a newcomer, just know once you run out of this resource here, you pretty much got to go uh, do a couple cartwheels around the map because that's about all there is to do. <laughs> now there's a little bit more to do in Honkai Star Rail, thankfully. Anyways, 97 out of 240. I have 97 uh, remaining. Let's go through all the tasks that we can use with this 97 here. Uh, we have the Calyx, which is your level up materials. Uh, this is essentially used to level up your characters. Then we have Bud of Ether. This is a material used to level up light cones. And then right here, you have your cash flow, the economy of Honkai Star Rail. This is going to be your credit, but it's essentially money. You have to use this to pretty much do anything. Um, and then you have your Calyx Crimson. This is going to be where every character goes to level up their particular traces. OK, so I'll go ahead and show you a quick example. Let's um, click on one of our characters here. Pella. If we come over to Pella, we have her light cone. We have her traces. We have her relics. We have her eidolons. Traces are your innate abilities that the character possesses, and they all can be leveled up to increase their damage. So if we come over here. It's going to cost this material right here, Obsidian of Desolation, to take this particular ability, which is her ultimate, up 
a notch and increase its performance. So if I go over here and I click on Calyx Great Mine, it's going to take me back to, well, it's actually, it'll take you directly to the sources, which is really cool. But that is essentially coming back over here. That is this area that I'm talking about. We can scroll down here and we can find that exact material that we're looking for to level up our character. That's going to be this section of the day to day and weekly things that you can do. Now they cost 10 per run. You can do up to six of them totaling to 60 trailblaze power that it will cost you. Um, but again, as you progress and increase your trailblaze power, you get more of these resources. Now let's move on to stagnant shadow. This is going to be similar to these, except this is utilized to level up your characters even further. So you have level up materials, which you use to level up your character's level. And then you have stagnant shadow materials, which is used to ascend your character. Again, for Genshin players, this terminology is very, um, you know, this is this is not new, falling on new ears here. Y'all know how this works. The same as Genshin Impact. But for the new player, you essentially need this material if you want to take my character from 50 to 60. You at first have to basically break through the 50 threshold to now then ascend them up 10 levels. Yeah, if that's confusing, it's only confusing at the beginning. Once you progress through the game, it just becomes like, uh, you know, second nature, so to speak. But basically, she has this material down here, two out of five. I can go over here to the stagnant shadow, the particular boss that drops the material I need to push her from 50 to 60. Now, this is going to cost you a total of, I believe, 30 or 35. I actually already forgot. Uh, 30. Yeah, so it's going to cost you 30 to get some of this material to ascend your character. So that's the Stagnant Shadow. And now we have our Cavern of Corrosion. This is where you go to farm relics, which I strongly do not recommend you waste any of your Trollblaze power on any of these relics until you reach at least Trollblaze power 50, which you're a good degree off from, uh, from obtaining, trust me. Now, why? Why should I avoid these? You're on a path to vertical progression, okay? Vertical progression means you're all you're trying to do is reach the end game as fast as possible. So any uh, current relics and gear that you have on is gonna be completely expendable because you're just progressing up so fast. So you're gonna spend a lot of time getting garbage relics with Trollblaze power that is effectively gonna be useless in a matter of a day or two or three because you're gonna get better gear. So it's not worth wasting Trollblaze power on such expendable resources, so to speak. Furthermore, the further you progress in Trollblaze power, you're going to unlock higher refinement qualities that are going to be guaranteed from these gears that you will actually keep on your account. Now, the RNG of getting substats is already a pain in the butt as is. Imagine getting uh, good RNG on pieces that you're not even going to use in the long run. You get what I mean? So this is the worst way to spend your Trollblaze power. As a veteran player, the only thing I'm spending my Trollblaze power on as of now in, in the uh, in the path to vertical progression to end game is going to be Bud of Memories to level up my characters. Uh, and then I'm using the traces to level up trace abilities of characters when needed. And then, of course, the character ascension materials to level up my characters even faster. Again, pretty much Stagnant Shadow and Calyx Golden are both utilized to level up your characters. And then Calyx Crimson is used to increase the strength of their abilities to keep it short and sweet. Stay away from this one until you hit Trollblaze 50. Ideally, you want to hit Trollblaze 60 because then you're guaranteed to get two five star uh, relic pieces that are going to pretty much, you know, help you with your little RNG grind. But trust me, the RNG in this game is pretty abysmal. So <laughs> even then, you're just, you're kind of no matter what. Uh, Echo of War is going to be the bosses that you get to fight on a weekly basis. Now, these bosses drop materials that are only going to be important once you get to trace level 8 on your characters. Uh, it's the same concept as Genshin Impact. Once your traces get to a certain threshold, you need that very, very valuable resource to increase it even further. You're going to have to fight particular bosses for particular characters. And uh, the other thing that the bosses also drop are going to be uh, free to play obtainable light cones. So if you're a free to play player, you're gonna hope that these bosses drop some free to play light cones for you so that you can pit use on your roster account. Now, my personal favorites are gonna be Quit Pro Quo, which is for a, a healer. You're gonna need this one eventually. It gives good energy recharge to the party, or not to the party, to somebody in the party. Um, I really like this one for the 
physical trailblazer it's actually a really good free-to-play option for physical trailblazer and then uh this one is the probably the best free-to-play value out of all the free-to-plays i'll look back over them but this is for erudition units and erudition units are very free-to-play friendly from the character progression phase you have serval who you get for free and you also have herta who you get for free both erudition units you're going to need this 100 percent for them uh so you want to try and get this one for sure early on and then finally we have our Harmony characters, which are the best supports in the game uh, as of now, competing with Nihility Path characters. This is going to be good for your Asta. You can put that on your Asta, and she's going to be good to go. Again, all of these are free-to-play obtainable, and there's another method of obtaining them as well, which we'll get into that. But before we move on, I'm staying on this weekly boss phase. This is another thing that is gate-kept behind story progression, and you want to uh, use this to farm relics as opposed to this so you get to do this three times a week and once you unlock these weekly bosses which is going to be a while you have to complete bella bog so right now you're on the space station you're going to complete the space station move on to the next little world it's going to be called bella bog then you're going to have to complete that story once you do that you're going to then unlock these weekly bosses and when you unlock them you want to start doing them on a weekly basis every single week because you're going to need these traces eventually for every character that you're using and then this is going to be your means and method of griming uh, relics because you're going to always get a four star relic or a couple four star relics from doing these. And that's the best way to farm your relics without consuming this very, very precious trailblaze power. Trust me on this. This is going to be the best way to farm your relics in the early game progression. That's what I've been doing as a veteran player with all the extensive knowledge that I have. These are some of the most universal even today uh, relic pieces that you can use across pretty much any character on your account you have this set and then you have this set and they both drop from the weekly bosses that you're going to be fighting okay so keep that in mind guys and uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to forgotten hall this is currently one of the in-game uh replayable content options that we have very similar to the uh, spiral abyss and genshin impact um this is going to be unlocked again once you progress through the story after a certain threshold uh, but i wouldn't worry about this at all there's one-time collectibles that are there indefinitely and then there's the forgotten hall that unlocks once you really get deeper into the game's end game but i just i'm telling you don't even stress about this just focus on getting your characters at least to a bare minimum of level 70 before you even think about doing the forgotten hall um, but there is something important that I do want to show you for the Forgotten Hall. Okay, so remember when I told you there was another alternative to getting those free-to-play light cones? It's going to be right here. It's called Shop Light Cone Manifest. Again, this isn't unlocked when you start off. You got to progress through the story. Um, but you're going to get resources, which are right here. You get this resource from doing Simulating Universe, which we'll get to in a bit. And you get it from also doing the Forgotten Hall itself. You're going to get enough of these resources to where you can eventually just outright buy some of these free to play light cones which again i suggest getting this if you don't already have it or quick pro quo or a uh, wolf walk time for your physical trailblazer and uh past and future for your harmony character uh these three here are going to be decent at best um this is good for sampo if you end up picking him up but for the most part past and future especially because ting yun's going to be on jingle you banner the very first banner for october 10th players this is going to be a very strong option for her for a free to play player uh, but these are what I recommend buying once you get to that uh, particular threshold. Uh, now, let's get back to Simulated Universe. So this is the Simulated Universe, a brand new mode in Honkai Star Rail. Uh, very unique and exclusive type of perk to Honkai Star Rail in and of itself compared to Genshin Impact and you know, other gacha games. I really like this mode. It's very fun at first. You're going to have a lot of good time with it. But the other thing you're going to have with it is weekly rewards. And these weekly rewards are very valuable. You get some uh, some uh, Stellar Jade, which is used to make wishes on the limited banner characters and limited banner light cones. You get one free singular uh, standard banner wish pass currency. You get some cash. You get this resource right here, which enables you to buy five star light cones. Uh, there's a ton of rewards you get from doing Simulated Universe on a weekly basis. And this is another thing that is gate kept behind story progression again. You don't want to uh, mess around with story progression. You want to unlock all this stuff so you can start doing it all on a weekly basis and a day to day basis. Now you see what I mean by that. Uh, another thing that you can do in the simulated universe that ties to character uh, horizontal progression is grinding when this is a pain even in the end game is grinding the two piece relics. Uh, this is can only be these two piece relics can only be acquired in the simulated universe. 
and you're going to use trailblaze power to grind them or you can wait for a week to week basis and they're going to give you at least four of these every single week again once you reach a, a certain threshold of trailblaze power and story progression you're going to get four of these every single week that you can use for completely free to roll your chances at getting some pretty good relics uh, i don't recommend using trailblaze power up outside of this unless you just need to fill up some relics and i'll show you exactly what i mean by that so if i come over here to my characters we have light cone, we have traces, and then we have relics. You have four relic pieces. That's the cavern that I explained to you earlier. And then you have the two on the inside. This is what the simulated universe is going to give you. The two on the inside. Now, again, not everybody's going to have these in the beginning. So it might be worth investing a little bit of trailblaze power just to get a piece on every single character that you have. Uh, but if you just be patient and wait on a day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis, everyone will eventually have their own relic pieces. Uh, but essentially, that's what you're going to go for the simulated universe. It's just to simply grind these two pieces on the inside. And there's two completely different set bonuses pertaining to the outside pieces and the two inside pieces. This is a very uh, core component of your character build in the end game. Now, the last thing I want to touch up on with the simulated universe is there's this shop called Herta Store. You have this currency up here and you can buy your very first five star light cone from this store, which is going to pertain to four different paths. We have the path of nihility, which is the debuffers, preservation, which is the shielders. And then we have the hunt path, which is the fast attacking characters. And then we have our destruction path, which is kind of like a mixture of a erudition and a hunt path character put into one. Um, but basically, you're going to decide upon which one of these you want to acquire. And you want to be careful with your purchase for sure depending on who you have on your account and who you're trying to build up. Uh, this will be a great option for free to play players that are looking to pick up Jing Li Yu. Uh, this will be a great option for hunt path players who are looking to play people that are of the hunt path, which right now I don't recommend picking up anybody if you're a new player because you don't have anybody on your account that's worth building up other than free to play Dan Hung who falls off miserably hard in the end game. So I wouldn't pick this one up if you're a new player today. It's just not worth doing. Um, this one could be a, uh, a yeah, it could be an okay option. I personally think your best uh, bang for your buck is probably going to be Destruction Path for Jingle U players, and that's about it for now. Not to mention, you can also use this on your physical Trailblazer as well if you want to. You can. Eh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, Preservation will be very good for the Fire Trailblazer as well. This is a strong option for your Fire Trailblazer tanking. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, these other two, I would hold off. You can also just hostage's resource until a particular character comes up that you really want to put these on. I really like this option on my Kafka, but you don't have Kafka. You're new, you're new to the game. I also like this option on my Luca and my Sampo and Serval. Serval will also be a very good option with this too. So if you're a Serval fan, Nihility, this path of Nihility Light Cone is definitely worth investing in. But apart from those characters, those are going to be my recommendations. Ah, and you know what? I guess I forgot to mention. This is used to superimpose them all the way to level 5 for completely free. If you don't know what superimpose is, it basically increases the potency of their abilities to the maximum. Because you can get stronger the more copies you have of something. But they already have it designed for free-to-play audience to get completely free. But again, this resource is scarce, so spend it wisely. It takes a very long time to get it back up to get any of these other light cones. So keep that in mind. Okay, now it is time to get into who should you invest into and do not give your account the Oprah Winfrey treatment. So in this gotcha game, your resources are very scarce and they're very hard to acquire because you're uh, limited on a day-to-day -day grind. So you wanna make sure you're investing in the right characters and you wanna make sure you're not trying to level up every single character on planet Earth that you acquire. It's just not gonna end well for you. If you do that, you're gonna be dry and out of resources and the game is basically gonna <laughs> give you a drip 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 in terms of your resources on a day-to-day -day basis because you spent them the wrong way so let's take a look at my free-to-play account right here uh we have a a number of characters here but if i come over here i'll show you the characters you're gonna get for completely free without doing anything whatsoever other than story progression uh number five so asta serval xing shui Bubs, which is my the trailblazer, the main protagonist, Dan Hung, March 7th, Natasha. These seven characters you're going to get for completely free without doing anything. Just progress through the story. You're going to get all seven of these characters. Who is worth investing in on these seven characters? I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot go wrong with the trailblazer. If you're a Genshin Impact player, 
This is essentially going to uh, end the same way as the Traveler in Genshin Impact. That is essentially four characters in one because they get four different elements as you progress through the story eventually. So you cannot go wrong investing in this character because it's essentially four characters in one. The other thing that's good about him is this character is very strong physical. The physical Trailblazer who you start off with very strong in early game progression like it's such a valuable unit i use them every single time i'm doing anything pertaining to uh physical weaknesses so you cannot go wrong because of that regard but once you uh unlock the fire spoiler alert you will unlock the other elements obviously once you unlock the fire they also become a uh, uh incredible sustainer for free to play players and you're going to need at least two sustainers on your account because in the uh, Forgotten Hall, which we mentioned earlier, one of the end game formats, you need two teams to complete the Forgotten Hall. So since you need two teams, you need a sustainer on each team. So you cannot go wrong investing in the Trailblazer. Uh, the other characters I'm gonna recommend you uh, invest in is gonna be another sustainer. These are your only other two sustainers that you're going to have, Natasha, March 7th, and then Fire, Trailblazer. So. I'll leave that up to you to decide on which one of these characters you want to invest in. You don't really have a lot of options right now until more sustainers come out down the road for you. I personally, if I had if I had to pick for you, I personally would go Natasha just because she's a healer and you already have your shielder over here. But depending on how many uh, Eidolons you might get lucky and pick up with with March 7th, she might be a better option as well. But for now, it's looking rough for you regardless. But in early game progression, just have your two sustainers built up 100%. Um, now, coming over here, you want to build up all three of these characters. This is one of the best DPS in the game, believe it or not. But she is shackled behind Eidolons. You want to acquire Xing Shui's Eidolons and she'll really start doing work. Ideally, you want to have E6. But if you can get her to E4, that is a massive damage boost. The good news is the Jing Liu banner that you're going to be... Uh, debuting with has uh, Xing Shui as a promotional character that you can acquire. You already get a copy of her for completely free. So if you can get um, a couple of more copies for her, you're going to be solid for early game progression 100%. You cannot go wrong investing in this character, I promise you. And the good thing is, if you pick up Jing Liu, you now already have your two DPS that are going to hold you down for a very long time. Um, Asta is literally one of the most valuable free to play characters in the game and actually one of the most valuable uh, characters in the game to date uh, thus far. So you cannot go wrong with building her up as well. She's going to be a invaluable support to your uh, to your account, especially considering that you don't have very many options anyway. But again, since Jing Liu banners debuting for your release, Ting Yun is literally a god tier four star support and you you should be able to get her. You get a ton of uh, wish resources picking up Ting Yun. You should be able to get her 100% and if you do, you have to. It's not even a question. You have to build up your Ting Yun. She's broken with a capital B. So build up Ting Yun, build up Asta, build up Xing Shui. And then Serval is 100% worth investing in for free to play early progression. Um, she does fall off hard in the late game until you unlock a lot of Eidolons for her. But for early game progression, a tremendous unit. She's going to hold it down for you. There's so many enemies that are weak to the lightning element. She does good AoE damage. She's been a ton of value for me as a veteran player starting over again. So definitely build up your Serval. And then finally, your five star option. Uh, that's going to be completely up to RNG. You get a free five-star character when you start this game over. And um, depending on who you get, who knows how that's going to turn out for you. I ended up getting Bailu. Um, I'll be honest, this is a great option for free-to-play newcomers who are progressing through the game. She's a healer. You need more healers. She's better than both of these options right here. Uh, so if you get her, it's actually not bad for you. But in terms of like in-game value, she falls off pretty hard as well. Uh, some people like her, but I'll tell you, I'll give you the cold hard truth. She's pretty mid. I'm not going to lie, but great for early game progression. Um, so finally, since we're talking about five star characters, ideally, if you uh, win your five star character roles, who's going to be the best uh, options? If you freaking get your first five star character and it's a Branya or a Welt, that is an absolute W, my friend. These characters of value is like pretty much never going to fall off. They're always going to be very valuable, especially Branya. Branya is queen above all. She's the most valuable character out of all these characters. And uh, 
it doesn't matter if she even gets power crept down the uh, line she's just so goddamn strong it just does not matter so if you pick up Ron, you hit the jackpot if you hit up well if you pick up well you hit the mini jackpot clara's value is actually rising as more and more follow-up synergies come out down the road so that's another character that you can pick up and uh, those are going to be the best th options now japard again another good option as a sustainer but not really necessarily needed um you can pick him up, and Japar mains are going to sit there and try and tell you he's way better than he is. He is. He's good. I like him. I love my Japar. But uh, you don't need him at all. I promise. You're going to get more sustainers down the road that are going to be of value. Uh, but pretty much, I recommend, or not recommend, I hope you get a Branya. That Let's just keep that short and sweet. If you don't, if you get somebody like Bailu or Japar, well, at the very least, you got a sustainer. And these two are just completely not necessary at all. I'm not going to shit on them. They're just not necessary. Let's move on to character trace investment. Uh, make sure that in the early game you don't have you don't overly invest on traces on every single character okay um and a good stopping point is going to be trace level eight right if you get to, which you're not going to be able to do in the early game anyways but you ideally want to get characters up to trace level eight and then stop because trace level nine and ten are very expensive and you get diminishing value because the increase is not going to be a significant increase in damage so you pretty much want to stop at eight just to preserve your resources to build up other characters that you're going to need to invest in. Um, just keep that in mind, guys, because I can see people just going haul out and just filling up every single. You don't need to fill up every stat in the tree, especially as you're progressing through the game. Just try and get with only what the character needs. And to give you a clear cut example, let's just click on somebody like Serval. Or, or Asta. Asta is a perfect example. I haven't touched her basic attack. I haven't touched her skill. I haven't touched anything other than her talent and her ult. Her ult boosts the speed of the party. Her um, talent gives a attack percent boost to the party when you land her skill on anybody's head. So I've invested in these and I haven't touched the other ones because they're just not necessary. I only need her to uh, increase the speed of my party, increase the attack of my party. And then I'm going to preserve my resources for somebody like Ting Yun because they both use the same material to level up their traces that are effectively going to make my DPS stronger. So preserve your resources. Trust me, you want to be stingy with every resource because they fall off hard in the end game. If you preserve them, You'll thank yourself later. Now, with regards to who are the best units in a game, I strongly recommend you just check out a couple of tier lists for the creators and the community that have already put together a tier list with their uh, invaluable insight that they have from playing the game for an extensive amount of time. Um, you're going to get some very good value, trust me. Um, but I'll tell you right now, if you can acquire yourself a Pella as a four-star character, one of the strongest four-stars, like a five-star unit, basically, especially once you get her E4 unlocked, um... She's very good as a four-star character. Lynx, again, another very good, valuable four-star option. Uh, this account, though, that I have is one of the worst free-to-play accounts. I've gotten so unlucky with it with characters. But if you can pick up a Pella as a four-star, you're good to go. Oh, my goodness, you're so good to go. Uh, other than that, that's going to wrap it up for my free-to-play advice, you guys. I really do hope I brought some kind of value to you. Again, we're progressing through this account. We're going to try and provide more guides if need be. But uh, thanks for watching and best of luck. Welcome to the community. We love to have you here. Come on in. Come on in. All right. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to drop by my twitch.tv slash gotcha smack. Uh, let me know you're a new player and I'd be happy to help you. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace, love and happiness.